<clears throat> okay, you go here, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I'm too embarrassed. Like... Oh yeah, and we have to look at the uh, we have to look at the camera, not us. Yeah, you look. You, then it looks like you're doing this. Oh, okay, well wow, that's weird. I'm like, yeah. why is he doing that? So, hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucy Pixel, and today I have a special guest. And the first time I've actually invited a guest on my show, and it just so happens, complete and utter coincidence, that this is my best friend growing up, Jimmy Suzanne, who's also an incredibly talented artist himself, uh, mostly in graphic novel artist. Graphic, uh, what? Graphic. <laughs> graphic novel. Comic books. Comic books, yeah. Comic books, yes. Comic book, uh, comic book artist and very well accomplished um, graphic designer, director, the whole bit. And um, over the last few, over the last few months, I've been posting videos and stuff like that where a lot of you uh, listeners have been sending me questions or making comments on a lot of videos that I thought, shit, I really could use another professional's expertise on the matter. I could really get a second a second voice on this because this is more of a community thing. And when Jimmy and I sit down, we do what we like to call our bitch and slurps. He coined that phrase um, as we're bitch and slurping right now. Cheers. Right. Mm, cheers. Nice. cheers. Yes, to our first mm. interview together. Um, mm. That's the slurping part. We would complain about things a lot, you know, stuff going on in the, in the industry and, and, and we've kind of followed each other through each other's careers and lives and everything like that. And a lot of the stuff is the real life stuff that, that happens to us on a daily basis. It's not that public, you know, uh, this is my commercial face type of thing that happens in the industry. The real day to day life stuff that happens to us, dealing with different difficulties, dealing with politics, getting great jobs, losing great jobs, you know, being you know, filthy rich one day and completely piss poor the next. We've walked through these different situations and both being professionals and both having directed and both being working artists and stuff like that as well. Um, we have a lot of insight into the goods and bads of everything and what to realistically expect. Now, as far as how we're going to do it today, um, it's kind of a Joe Rogan-esque kind of video podcast, just kind of shooting the shit and you know, nothing rehearsed as far as that goes. We just kind of have a couple of topics we want to talk about and we'll see where it goes. It might be a completely waste. It might be a complete waste of your time. It might be phenomenal. So, you know, nice. you're going to you're going to have to <laughs> keep your fingers crossed that hopefully this turns out OK in the end. All right. <laughs> uh, I don't know where you're going with We're this. laughing because I'm fucking up and I have to keep I have to keep, you know, re-saying what I'm saying. Nice. This is this is real life Adam here when I'm recording. Well I thought we could get to know you a little bit better. Uh, mm -hmm. of course I know him extremely well. We've known each other since we were little children. We grew up on the same street together, we went to school together, but um uh to get a little bit uh, to get to know a little bit more about Jimmy Susan over here, or Jimmy Susan for all of you Anglos out there, and uh yeah education like where did you originally go to school how did that all start up for you i went to the academy of design uh back in 96 wow yeah. which you know kind of reveals my age <laughs> our age <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know it was uh it was like an 18 month program yeah and uh like you know it was a it was a very popular program. It was in uh, graphic design. Yeah. And uh, the computer part of graphic design just started, again, revealing how really old I am. Really? No kidding. It's pretty bad. It was before the internet. OK, I, was, I said enough. Anyways, <laughs> before, <laughs> before there is such a thing, yes. Yeah. We started in classes of 30, yeah. and they were giving out grants and all that stuff. And multimedia was a new word. And everybody liked the little, uh, you know, how do you call them? The uh, arrobas? Uh, the ampersand? Yeah, the the, yeah, little, the at yeah. sign. Yeah. And they were it was like pasted everywhere and everybody's like, Oh my god, Matrix came out. Everybody's like, Oh yeah. computers, computers. So ended up going there not because of Matrix, because me, my personal uh, uh, you know, my goal was to find out how to make comic books. Right. And the printing part of comic books, you know, how right. to set it all up and get it ready for print and all that stuff. So eventually I could do it myself. Right. But you know, that's what led me to graphic design. And then, you know, we started in classes of 30. And then, uh, as you know, like, as the months went by, like, people started dropping like flies. Yeah. And then we ended up uh, being in classes of five each. They merged classes and still people dropped. We were like 15 
out of like 120 people that, that actually stuck it through. Yeah, yeah. That actually stuck. I remember through. that. Yeah. yeah, you ended up in the end of your class. It was just like this dark little. <laughs> yeah, corner. it was dark. And there was just like four of you still. We're still here. We're still here. <laughs> yeah. Nobody had computers. They had to like go to go to class and get like a, a special key to like sneak in yep. and actually like work. And it was everything was beige back then. It was like you know, it's like those days. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to stop talking about the past because I'm starting to feel really old. <laughs> We're already starting to get depressed. Yeah. It gets better, trust me. Um, yeah, so, okay, so you graduated from that and then you jumped straight into what after? Like, what was your first job out of the gate? Well, you got me my first job. Oh, yes. That was at uh, Zach. Zach. Yeah. yeah. It was at Zach uh, Interactive Solutions. Wow. Wow, see, like, how fun that was. It used to be, it was originally called Zach Technologies. Yeah. Is it st it's not around anymore. No, no, no. It, it died, died, died a It's a small place. Horrible death. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when the bubble burst, yeah. you know, the multimedia bubble burst, like, everything kind of died. Yeah. But that was my first job, and I was a, a graphic designer, and then six months later, I was art director. Really? Yeah. That early on in your career? Yeah, yeah. No kidding. Yeah, I was... Uh, I guess I was one of the lucky ones. I guess some people that are very sensitive to to design and yeah. the quality of your work. Yeah. So you know, we kind of we kind of you know elevate you like pretty fast back then. What was it? What do you think? Like from your from your observations, what was it you think got you that job as a director? What made you recognizable as a director type? Well, it's kind of because um, me, it was just like funny that I was getting paid to do what I always did you right know? I would sketch I would uh, like that I think that's what made the difference is it? I'm from an illustration background yeah you know and I would I would sketch my concepts I would do storyboards easily um, you know even character concepts because we had a little bit of uh, 3d uh, you know thing going on like with like interactive games and video games and all that stuff so that yep. was fun I had a hand in a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're curious, you want to know like how things work and people are sharing at the at this time. It's yeah. a good opportunity to, to pick up on a lot of things and yeah. uh, be involved. So I was really involved and I was really, uh, um, uh, you know, curious about everything and, you know. I have a question for you. Do you think, because there's a similarity, I got into direction for a similar, for because I had a similar quality. Mm -hmm. At Zach, for instance, when I was working at Zach, I wasn't a director. I didn't start being a director at, at that point at all. I was I was strictly art and animation at that point. But I was the only 2D guy next to Pierre, who was the who was the director, who was the artistic yeah. director there. Um, next to Pierre, um, uh, I was the only other 2D guy, and the 3D guys only knew 3D. Yeah. So they were, the 3D guys were all uh, very gifted at executing the tech behind it the mm -hmm. technical side of doing 3d animation but very early 3d animations nothing compared to today's standard but still and they needed a 2d guy to be creative because a lot of these people didn't have any kind of creative backing at all mm -hmm. and when later fast forward into my career a little bit later on i'm one of the reasons i was hired as a director is because i knew 3d i ended up having to learn 3d because 2d wasn't cutting it for my career wise i wasn't finding work with it so i got into 3d but then ironically it was combining that with 2D mm -hmm. that made me recognizable as a director because I could kind of speak, I could talk to talk between two different departments, the yeah. 3D and the 2D department. That's something that got you your direction director job right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that's still the case? Or do you think that now it's, it's, it's a prerequisite at this point to kind of know both in a sense? Like I know for my animation, my 3D animation students, mm -hmm. they need to know 2D as well. They actually have to, they have to, uh, study 2D before they're even allowed to get into 3D. Mm -hmm. So do you think what got you a director job back then could still get a director job today? Um, definitely if you can draw, it's an asset, but I don't think it gets you the, the position. You don't think it's the be all end all? No, no, no. Like if you go to university, like right off the bat, you're not a director. You know what really? I mean? Like it's not, uh, you don't pay your dues. You don't, right. yeah. you don't really like experience what it's like to start from the bottom and climb your way up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and you get a few people that are, that, you know, give you, hand you that gift of like elevating you like right away. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you don't, you don't get that right off the bat. You take for granted your art director and you won't settle for anything less yep. because you have a certain degree, but it doesn't mean that your experience is better than mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like. 
you didn't live the stuff that I went through to get there. You just right. there right off the bat. Now there's nothing wrong with that, mm-hmm. but the the point is, I think you stand more to benefit when you really have to really work your ass off for something and then get the the credit that's due. Yeah, you know, as opposed to just having it and just walking into that. Do you find like? Into it. Because I've worked for my share, like, forget being a director, just working for directors. Because I still work for directors to this day. Um, what would you say from a professional perspective, not from your perspective, but from who you've worked for? What makes a good director and what makes a shitty director? Like, what makes a director suck in your opinion? What What are the difficulties you deal with with a director? A lot of egos. You know, okay. It's, yeah. a, it's a lot of egos. People uh, take a lot for granted. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the fact that they are, they have a job, and they are like, you know, able to to do what they do, and people listen to them. They just yeah. take for granted. I'm an art director. You listen to me no matter what, and my word goes, and that's how the way it's supposed to to be. But you know, it, they they don't. Um, what I find is when you spend the time and actually get to know your coworkers, despite the if they're like high level or not. If you you actually care enough to sit down with them, get to know them a little better, see what makes them tick, mm-hmm. take notes from things that they really, you know, are passionate about. When it especially comes to like a specific project, you know, you're able to recognize people's strengths, you know, their talents. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can, and then you can actually use that to your advantage mm-hmm. to actually make people feel and to let them know that we all came up with this. Yeah. And I just took your words and uh, your uh, intuition towards something and just put an image on it and designed something around it and be like, this is what we came up with. Mm-hmm. You know, I, that makes all the difference. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answers the question, but... It does. Yeah, no, it's it's because that's the thing. I find that depending on who you're working with, I, I, I won't name name. I won't, we won't be naming any names if there's any bitching going on. Just, you know, we don't want so to piss anybody off directly, but you know who you are if you've pissed us off. That's right. <laughs> we, got you, <laughs> we got your number. Uh-huh, all right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what's I know up. where you live. <laughs> but... Um, with that said, uh, even a, a more recent situation was working with a director who, number one, I find is, I do find personally very important, especially if you're doing traditional artwork, mm-hmm. is somebody who's already a good artist. Yeah. That to me makes a huge difference because I was working for a director for a certain company who I absolutely loved. She knew what she was doing. She was very concise. She knew, ex- she re- respects your style because she, uh, uh, I like for me, a good director recognizes that when they hired you, they hired you because of what you do, mm-hmm. what you've already done, se- like what you're already seasoned at doing. And when they hire you, um, they're hiring you to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, everybody's got their own specific vision and stuff like that. There's certain criteria you need to meet. And a director is there to make sure that you follow a certain formula as far as the studio is concerned. But after that, respect that artist's particular tastes and understand the, the artistic workflow. And you need to be an artist to understand yeah. when something will take an artist 20 minutes to fix and when something will take an artist two weeks to fix. Yeah. What would you say are the telltale signs, things to look out for when you're dealing with a client, things that might send off a bit of a red flag that this might be more trouble than it's worth? Like what kind of red flags have you recognized? Me when a client says, uh, I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't like. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, so it's gonna be an endless, you know, wave after wave of like, do you like this? Do you like this? Yeah. Do you like this? Do you like this? You know, if, uh, if when you work in an agency, it's important to have client services, like somebody that actually knows how to read the client yeah. and actually invites you to meet the client, the creative, yeah. so you can actually see something else entirely. You might see, they might take uh, the order down and it's like pretty clear in their head, that's client services, they take the order down yeah. from the client. And I would see something, like I would see through that. Yeah. From experience, from intuition saying like, the guy's saying this, but is that, can I make the difference between what he wants and what he needs? Mm-hmm. You know, what does he want? What does this business that's mean? That's hard to do. And it's not, it's not something that uh, people pick up on right away. No. You know, it's trial and error. But once you had like a few like bad hits with clients that are very difficult and you can't please for some reason, you don't know, you don't know why. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you can actually gauge the, uh, 
the level of uh, creativity you put in. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't. Uh, you don't have to bombard them with like new concepts right away. Like. Yeah and endless new concepts and you're completely drained yeah you know with experience you're able to like you know just like a, a samurai or a, a sniper you know you just like get you have patient enough to go for that sweet spot yeah a few shots possible you know what i mean like yeah that's a big thing mm -hmm. less is more yeah you know well, where you know I, I don't know if I don't know if you made this mistake at the beginning. I used to do this mistake at the beginning of my career when dealing with freelance clients. Mm -hmm. I wanted to please them, and I thought the more options, the better. Oh, and that's the opposite. Yeah, um, you you have to realize that you're the artist. Mm -hmm. You're the you're the creative thinker. The director's hiring you to do that thinking for them. So if you dump 25 concepts on their plate, number one, they're never going to find a they're never going to conclude on anything. No, there's too many. And if they are, it's always, always the one you hated doing. Of course. You know, never, I also learned never include, never include the option of a piece of artwork that you don't want to do because they'll pick that one. Yeah. It's yeah. like they know. Yeah. It's like, I don't think he likes that one. Let's, let's I feel him. bad chi on <laughs> this one. <laughs> let's do that so we can be pissed off yeah. and like chew off his own arm and so yeah. he can't work on it anymore. You know yeah. I mean? And you're like, saddled with doing, you're saddled with having to do a piece of artwork you can't stand and you yeah. kind of set yourself up for it. Plus, Giving less, if somebody says, do you like, like, you know, the Morpheus thing, do you pick the red pill or the blue pill? Yeah. If you said, do you want the red pill, the blue pill, the yellow, the green, the taupe, the puce, the amber, the, the turquoise, there's no, the, forget it. Give the two best choices and leave it at that. And, and you know, don't forget, you're the artist. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to know, like, where to, what to present. They trust you to make that decision. Yeah. If you leave it up to them, you will have a never ending nightmare yeah. of a project, never ending over budget. You know what I mean? Like, and you'd be like completely drained. You, you know, you say, these are my two options. Now, yeah. if they are not satisfied or they're like, eh, you have other options, but even then you don't show them everything. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, by the way. That's like an emergency thing. Yeah, yeah, you have like your wild cards. You know what I mean? Like the, the ones that you would love to, for them to see and just to test them and see like, well, that's another option we were thinking about. It's a bit out there, but what do you think of that? Yeah. You know, you'd be surprised. Sometimes I was, pr sometimes most of the times, I was pleasantly surprised the client yeah. went for the crazy wild option and everybody was happy and we're like, oh my God, we're going to do something fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not only we answer to the, the, the demand, the client's demand, but we actually push the concept to a whole nother level yeah. where people want to live in that world, including the clients. So that's like, you know, a good win for you. And yeah, that's when you detach yourself from the pack. That's when you actually do concept that, you know, everybody wants to take part of. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's a question. And this is something I actually want. I was one of the main reasons why I got in touch with you and wanted to talk to you about this is because we've had a lot of discussions, a lot of our bitch and slips at the cafe mm -hmm. or at a restaurant have been over this. Mm -hmm. And it's when things go wrong, when things go bad with a client, a client that doesn't want to pay you, a client that's, you know, indecisive, like mm -hmm. you said, or, you know, or delays things or whatever the case might be. But I think when it comes down to the money issue, that's mm. the one that stresses people out the most, especially for artists, yeah. because there's a good chance, unless you're already a well-established artist, that you've got the little added bit of stress and incentive to chase after the client is hunger. Mm -hmm. Hunger is a very powerful force Jesus. and hunger will get you chasing after things when sometimes it's not the necessarily the best thing and you're kind of taking a bit of a chance. Yeah. Now, with that said, what if things go wrong? In the event that it goes wrong, mm -hmm. under normal circumstances, what do you do? You know, let's say you worked on a client, you, you've, worked with, you've worked on a client. Okay, <laughs> let's rephrase that for a moment. <laughs> Been working on his kidneys for two weeks. This time, just go for the job, man, and go for broke. Yeah, just, just, just go, for the, go, for the, go for the knockout. <laughs> I'm trying, we're trying to keep this serious because we have a hard time being serious together. Um, <laughs> now, what was I talking about? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, yes. A client goes, let's say you've been working on something and the client says, okay, I'm going to pay you at the end of a contract and mm -hmm. it's like a two-week contract or a month contract or whatever. And you've been really, really, you know, you've really been working hard on this thing. You've been putting long hours into it. And then in the end, they say, I, I don't like it. You know, I don't like it. I don't like where this is going. Uh, maybe they even say, you know, I'm not going to pay for something I don't want. I'm not going to pay for something I don't like. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you handle? And now this has a lot to do with 
your where you are in your career as well. Yeah. Money is a big issue. You don't have mm -hmm. money to yeah. back you up. What do you do if somebody tries to screw you over? How do you handle that legally? What do you do? What's the, what's the honest answer to that? What really happens in real life? Because this is something that I know that a lot of my viewers are. This is a this is a topic that they've they've wanted to hear more about. Yeah. Well, you know, in the beginning, you're you're naive. You're trusting. You know, you go on faith that people are gonna live up their end of the, bar, the the exchange, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, you do you confront those kind of like situations where you have to wait forever for money and people don't pay you and all that yeah. stuff. But to avoid all that, you have to make it clear in writing mm. that if you want to start a project with me, this is how much it's going to be and I require a percentage that you decide as a deposit. To so, show in good faith. To yeah. show good faith so you can show me that uh, you are serious about this yeah. and I will take your project seriously. Yeah. And then you actually make it clear that that, that amount includes two to three like steps or a period where they can actually change their mind yep to avoid doing all the work and then at the end they're like oh you know what i don't like it yeah you know because in the when you do this when you have those you know those uh steps when you can actually like get them to approve the the project in a different state they will never approve something that they don't like mm. and you have it in writing yeah and if it, and if you send it by email they write you back by email if they like it, it's written and it's just as good as Email, having it on always paper. Always have it in writing, yeah. So she always said, she said that doesn't no, that no, doesn't no. hold what, wait, yeah. Always send it by email. Always break it down. Say like, oh, this is the first approval stage. Yeah. Uh, this is what I did. Tell me what you think. Give me some feedback. Mm -hmm. They'll give you. Oh, Jimmy, we like it. Can you change this, 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 and that? And then you're like, okay, you know what they like, and you know what they don't like. You just do the modifications and then send it back for the second stage of, of, of approval. Mm -hmm. They're, they allow three, so that's the second. Sometimes it stops at second, sometimes it goes to three. You'll actually go to three levels of approval. Yeah, yeah. or really. sometimes four, because depending if there's one person that approves or a team of people that approve, mm -hmm. it you know it might differ you know from one to three stages of approval. Mm -hmm. You know, so I always go with three because it covers pretty much everything, and right. you try to you try really hard to you know, send as much fees, feedback as possible and they will take you seriously and they will not waste your time yeah. with like back and forth, like, you know, the emails and stuff like that. Yep. So as long as it's clear that every step they approve something and then in the end it's done, you will eradicate any like uh, misconception or uh, drama that comes with like an undecisive client that actually like doesn't like it in the end because mm -hmm. they liked every step of it. So in the end, they have to pay you. You have a deposit already, just uh, just in case. But you know, you have it on paper, meaning emails that uh, they they owe you that money. So you'll take uh, legal action if you have to. Yeah. You have everything to back. Yes, so. you you actually have things in writing, and mm -hmm. you can't dispute that in court. Yeah. If it's your email and it's you know you wrote it, you're liable. You're you're accountable for that. So I hope you enjoyed this part one of my interview with the great Jimmy Suzanne. We're gonna have a part two as well, where we're gonna be talking about comic cons, getting yourself into comic cons, how to present yourself well, and publishing, self publishing versus working with a publisher. Mm -hmm. We talked about a lot of awesome stuff. So a lot of you artists out there that want to work independently or get your own products out there. He's got some real gems for you next week, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, but apart from that, hopefully you enjoyed today's behind the scenes, our special first video podcast situation thingy um, with Jimmy Suzanne. Remember to tune in every Monday, 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I post a new video every single week, as well as the Brush Sauce Theater Art Contest with myself and Tyler Edlin every month as well. And of course, if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Thank you. We'll see you next week. All right. And uh, and take care, everybody. Happy painting. Oh.